Chapter 5. Efficiency through change of pace. Hear how he clears the points o a faith. Why rattlin an i thumpin? Now meekly calm, now wild in wrath. He's stampin an he's jumpin. Robert Burns, Holy Fair. The Latins have bequeathed to us a word that has no precise equivalent in our tongue, therefore we have accepted it, body unchanged, it is the word tempo, and means rate of movement, as measured by the time consumed in executing that movement. Thus far its use has been largely limited to the vocal and musical arts, but it would not be surprising to hear tempo applied to more concrete matters. For it perfectly illustrates the real meaning of the word to say that an ox cart moves in slow tempo, an express train in a fast tempo. Our guns that fire six hundred times a minute shoot at a fast tempo, the old muzzle loader that required three minutes to load shot at a slow tempo. Every musician understands this principle, it requires longer to sing a half note than it does an eighth note. Now tempo is a tremendously important element in good platform work. For when a speaker delivers a whole address at very nearly the same rate of speed he is depriving himself of one of his chief means of emphasis and power. The baseball pitcher, the bowler in cricket, the tennis server, all know the value of change of pace, change of tempo, in delivering their ball, and so must the public speaker observe its power. Change of tempo lends naturalness to the delivery. Naturalness, or at least seeming naturalness, as was explained in the chapter on a monotony, is greatly to be desired, and a continual change of tempo will go a long way towards establishing it. Mr. Howard Lindsay, stage manager for Miss Margaret Anglin, recently said to the present writer, that change of pace was one of the most effective tools of the actor. While it must be admitted that the stilted mouthings of many actors indicate cloudy mirrors, still the public speaker would do well to study the actor's use of tempo. There is, however, a more fundamental and effective source at which to study naturalness, a trait which, once lost, is shy of recapture, that source is the common conversation of any well-bred circle. This is the standard we strive to reach on both stage and platform, with certain differences, of course, which will appear as we go on. If speaker and actor were to reproduce with absolute fidelity every variation of utterance, every whisper, grunt, pause, silence, and explosion of conversation as we find it. Typically in everyday life, much of the interest would leave the public utterance. Naturalness in public address is something more than faithful. Reproduction of nature, it is the reproduction of those typical parts of nature's work which are truly representative of the whole. The realistic story writer understands this in writing dialogue, and we must take it into account in seeking for naturalness through change of tempo. Suppose you speak the first of the following sentences in a slow tempo. The second quickly, observing how natural is the effect. Then speak both with the same rapidity and note the difference. I can't recall what I did with my knife. Oh, now I remember I gave it to Mary. We see here that a change of tempo often occurs in the same sentence. For tempo applies not only to single words, groups of words, and groups of sentences, but to the major parts of a public speech as well.